Welcome everybody to our true self talk. The life discussion and sharing after our monthly remote energy session, connecting with our true self, something that we have been doing here for over eight years now for thousands of people to experience their own true self from within. I'm unmuting all your microphones, including those of the co-facilitators, the trained energy workers that do the session, the energy session with me. And I want to make a few comments about this and ask those co-facilitators, Cheryl, Sheila, Amanda, Becky, Annette, and Annette, um, how this feels like from your end in general. There is uh, something that we encounter on a regular basis, and that is a certain apprehension or fear of participants that come to this public session to be seen or to be discovered or this fear of what are they going to see. This has nothing to do with our session today. It's just a general aspect. I wanted to ask you, the co-facilitators, how does this feel like from your perspective? I mean, whatever the people think it is going on during the session and us reading their energy, what is it actually like? People are afraid of going there because it feels kind of like a group thing or a public thing and they feel vulnerable. What is it actually, I know that you personally probably felt that way too at some point years and years back. What <laughs> Sometimes is it that I it feel like that feels... daily. <laughs> <laughs> but what is, it, what is it actually like, the, the experience that we have during these sessions when uh, there was lots of people in there what is this like? Give people an, an, a feeling for, do we sit there and say, oh, look at him and look at her. Oh, what, what they're all, you know, oh my God, they were like so stuck and blah, blah. Is it like that? No, no, no. It's uh, from a co-facilitator uh, and we are actually in the transmission as well as all the participants. So we, 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 we can feel our own stuff. We can feel the, the, um, the participants stuff and we we feel the field itself and it's not about picking on anyone that doesn't that's not really what i mean but you know we 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 have the ability to feel the the entire field or we can zoom in on individual participants um anybody that signed up to come with this their true self is willing and that opens up uh, a level of expansion to communicate with people on different levels so in essence without sounding too woo woo our true selves are speaking to the participants true selves but when you're on this side of it we're also communicating through a skype link so we're typing in the same time that stuff is happening so it's kind of like walking between two worlds at the same time you've got one foot in the field per se and the other one is doing 3D stuff, communicating with words and typing. And so as the session moves forward, all, all the facilitators start to communicate and we all notice the same things, but we express it in different ways. Some of us might feel things through our body. Some feel things with words or feelings. So the, it, the, congruence ties together and makes this really cool little package of all of the stuff happening at the same time is like i always think of it like a symphony and this music is playing but the music is actually energies again it's try not to sound hollywood here but <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a very is, is that what you're asking party. <laughs> yeah, it's like our true selves are in there too. We're going through the same processes. This is what allows us to put words onto things besides the aspects that we observe energetically. So when we observe things energetically, it can look like the picture that you see on your screen here right now. Um, and it can all, go all the way to us actually picking up on things that are 
bothering you or that you are working through energetically right now. So our job here, and this is also the reason for this live session discussion, is to be like a translator for you. As we go into this place, this connection place with our own true self as facilitators, we are straddling these two worlds, how Cheryl just described it, and this allows us to communicate with a part in you that is uh, maybe not that conscious to you or that you cannot hear that clearly yet, or sometimes you do, but at other times you're too distracted and you get confused. So our job in, in, in terms of being of service to you is to help you find this roadmap that comes through your true self to you. And it's a very neutral observation. You can imagine we, I mean, I do this all day long, every day. All right, there is uh, no uh, judgment or any kind of uh, like, oh, look at this or something like that. Our intention here is to provide a safe space for you so that you can actually do this self-discovery, this exploration in a guided way that can help you to better understand yourself, to better feel into what it actually is inside of you that sometimes produces uh, inner schisms and fragmentation, as we call this, you know, where you simply don't know and sometimes where you get a clear prompting, but you might not feel empowered or courageous enough to trust in this. And this is the opportunity here for you to do this with trained people who are able to straddle these two worlds. So I just wanted to point this out in general, that this connection with true self-process that we offer here as a free complimentary session for everyone is available for everyone and we encourage people to keep coming back because with every session, with every time that we consciously connect within, more of these, say, puzzle pieces and different dimensions of self, some of which, like as Cheryl mentioned, come to us in form of energetic sensations. There is a long list of typical energetic sensations during such a session in the instructions, but also the more intangible, the very subjective part in us that, that wants to speak truth to us. This is basically what we define as the true self, the mediator between our soul self and our ego self. So all that said, coming to the session here that we had today just a few minutes ago. Yeah, this was a really cool session. Um, right at the beginning, we felt such expansion and willingness, like the, the field got really wide, which means to me that the, the, the presence of love was all around. Sometimes when we, when we begin, it, it's a little hard to get connection to source but this one right away it just became really open and and um from from my perspective that means that there's a lot of willingness a lot of opportunity there and uh this is how we felt it there was people um while everyone was indeed working through some of their stuff we saw i saw a lot of it kind of as a cleaning and um everyone was very willing which is really cool mm -hmm. uh yeah it was very free flowing and awesome i just really uh like to thank all the people that came because your energy was very very willing it felt like renewing sort of or i don't know hard to find words that fitted <laughs> but right and very that's why cool. we do this live sharing right because it's so difficult to find the the words we normally don't share those things and that's why we practice this that's why this true self talk even just listening to this even if you weren't part of the session it's a very healing thing to just listen to other people describe things but i would like to invite you 
to share in your words, in your very own way of witnessing this connecting process with yourself, what this felt like. And I want to point out one more thing, and that is that this connection process is not an event, it's a process. And it is very possible that you have already had sensations or insights or promptings before the session. And it is highly likely, this is in the very nature of energy sessions, that you will continue to feel something prompting you from the inside here following the session the next couple of days or uh, weeks perhaps. So it's never a static thing. Energies work on multidimensional levels. They come back to us in all different perspectives and different ways. So when we share here, we're merely sharing a snapshot of what we experienced, what we witnessed. Does anybody volunteer to share what this felt like from your end, from your end of straddling two worlds, being in this 3D body with all sorts of sensations and emotions and thoughts, but at the same time also feeling this eternal part in you that is not necessarily bound to this 3D experience. Anything that you experience during this session on, say, the physical level or in emotions that came up in you or perhaps true inner guidance, like things that you actually heard. You know, maybe you felt this in form of a spirit guide talking to you or maybe you saw other people, maybe you saw us in the etheric or etheric form. I'll, yes. I'll talk quickly. Um, as uh, <laughs> okay, I can't touch. I mean, it's just like so phenomenal each time. And I could you start to talk about how many years you've been doing these, and I literally am not in any time, and my brain doesn't even register how many of these I've been involved in, but um. When you mention a couple things, like in terms of being revealed, one one thing that came to me because I felt like a lot of physical things, and I was uh -huh. helping focus to get through some physical things. That there's things about our body that maybe we have misinformation about, and even medical science is not aware of in terms of healing. And that I found was very likely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like in a way, not like this kind of pessimistic, like against the medical system, but literally mm -hmm. like, oh, I see. You know, like that. This again, the to be a humble human beings, even you know whoever they 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 are in terms of it, but taking responsibility as my own human being, and and being humble and and going, yeah, people are not humble to actually listen to be able to tap into the evolution like it's really still even with how science seems like um this is not something i'm caught up in at all how science seems like it knows everything it so far doesn't well it pretends it does yeah when we go I into mean, this in between place we realize that there are so many more aspects and dimensions of ourselves that are nowhere near covered by yeah, just Yeah, I mean, what comes to me science. is not like making them wrong because I, I exactly. totally, it's it's like what I'm able to, who not to listen to and mm -hmm. where to go to for the information that's much more accurate. It, again, like you said, if there's any guidance that came to me, that was one level of it, one kind of dimensional level, because there was a few other things. And I actually forgot that this is often, a, it's supposed to be a group thing. So I don't know what was going on with the group. I went in and was like, Let me say know. something about this. This is not yeah. supposed to be a group thing at all. Okay, this is a misconception. So anybody who comes into the session thinking that this is a group thing is completely, uh, has a misconception. Okay, this is an individual subjective process. And the fact that we do this uh, as a group uh, with, uh, you know, like 10 uh, different co-facilitators and 
maybe anywhere from like 50 to 100 people, does not mean that it's a group thing. In the etheric, this isn't working like that at all. What we use is the simultaneous focus, all right, that comes in through this willingness that Cheryl mentioned at the beginning. So anyone who signs up for the session comes in wanting to connect, and that is an extremely high vibratory energy that when we put 100 people together, it amplifies it. It makes it even easier to connect for ourselves. So what we use is the field, as, as Cheryl called it, that is produced through all of you guys here coming from all these different places from this world together, which creates a network, it creates a space in an energetic field, a resonance that allows us to pierce through these barriers of perception. So just to, to have that said, because that's one of the other things that I mentioned in the beginning that can make people apprehensive. You're not supposed to connect with anybody but your true self in these sessions. There is no we in this. It's all about me. If you read the invocation, this is about you making a commitment to yourself, wanting to become a true self. And the only hint here in regards to others is to accept them as true selves, to allow them to be true selves as well. It's a complete opposite of connecting with others. It's allowing people and even the planet Gaia, there's a reference to the planet Gaia. She is a true self as well. She is an organism, an energetic organism as well, to have their own evolution, to have their own space. So I, I didn't want to point this out here or disrupt you, Janet, as um, wronging you. I just wanted to clarify this because this is something that frequently comes up in these sessions. Okay, so I hope that you can find your 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 train of thoughts again. I just just really really wanted to point this out. So sorry for uh, disrupting uh, your sharing here. You no, went. No, that into... is, that, that's fine. I mean, because it's so there's so many levels. Again, it's information that's true information that um, you know the result of it is reiterating and again when you say it's this field that's made it, that brings true information true selves that's really the only thing that we can continue to uh listen to otherwise mm -hmm. um like yeah. this um it's even more clear to me that yes janet the work that you're doing now is good but also you need to keep moving in the direction of your true abilities and allow those things to happen too and stop you know who you even... truly are yeah yeah and sometimes yeah. janet this is the the reason why i pointed this out to you here sometimes this very thought process that we have to look at others that we have to you know is not something that is wrong but it requires us to have a good foundation in ourselves first. And sometimes this very thought process, oh, you know, I need to, to look what other people feel, how they see me. You know, we call this externalization, where we make the, the way we perceive ourselves depend on how other people see us or how other people respond. Is the very guidance that our true self wants us to get. Namely, to let go of that. Yeah, what you just said, to find out who you truly are. Okay, that is something that has nothing to do with how other people see you. I can even go, you know, into the spiritual here and say it, it supersedes this lifetime. So who cares, you know, what your neighbor thinks about you? You know, in the next lifetime, that neighbor is not going to be there. So, but your true self will still be there. You know, you still have to deal with that. Yeah, you got disconnected here for a sec. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. Just what you just said. I mean, it, 
it, it became clear the reasons for a lot of things and the ability to the ability to not mentally lock on the things so much consciously or unconsciously both of those mm -hmm. things you mentioned some physical aspects would you like to uh, elaborate on them you're working through some physical things uh, was there any uh, sensations that you had in your body during the session or promptings to look at certain um, aspects of your of your physical well it wasn't again it, it it was this thing that instead of going to organs or something like that I mm -hmm. um, to relax a bit more I don't know it's some, I started to okay. take the energy up through the left side of my body and to go for symmetry this is something that I've always uh, for I have to just continue to remind myself of and this part of my work is with symmetry so I go into working with symmetry um, oh yes this visual <laughs> very the, good symmetry um, is, a, is a really beautiful way to describe what we would call wholeness or just sort of being more in the center of ourselves right because if we are sort of standing next to ourselves be it on the right or on the left or in front or behind ourselves right we are not fully feeling ourselves we cannot fully feel ourselves and we can also cannot fully inhabit ourselves this is a big issue in regards to our susceptibility from outer energies and we're not standing in the center of our own sort of you know symmetry is, is is probably the best way to visualize this then it's our perspective can be skewed and our per perception of reality can be skewed not wrong but just skewed you know because they because they because of the angle that we have that's really well, yeah, really good inner like guidance the more that i mean the more that it's like a a physical muscle almost the more that symmetry because symmetry is is where we're supposed to be anyway um the other things just naturally fall away without grap grappling with them and, and things like that so that makes it easier and i also then re-tapped into some training i had done over 10 12 years ago with somebody where we you know i was training at that point not with what i already know now but going into it with uh, internal like medical you know like medical mm -hmm. intuitives that go into a body and uh, that's what occurs to me today that I kind of retapped back into the depth of going in physically and not with any judgment just kind of working energetically mm -hmm. through my body so it sounds yeah. really good it sounds like it empowered you in a way or gave you more courage to see yourself as whole as a whole more than just like say a bunch of dna <laughs> and a bunch of organs and you know the, the the reduced sort of materialistic view of of your body that is yeah, a very, that can very, be very beautiful but the, you know the one word that comes with it right now as you say that is and uh, i would pass on to anybody it's just like inner beauty like that's not i didn't have any vocals it was very visual and feeling to me and shifting um but just like anybody struggling with anything physical this um what's the words uh, where we re just release everything just give it up and mm -hmm. so confidence right. and yeah. it's you know it'll be there that's what the group energy brings is is the assistance it really Very nice. thank yeah, you yeah so i what i hear you know what i take from your sharing janet is that you received the guidance to to be more in your own center to be more symmetrical in how you feel or see yourself which in your case is as you just described your way of perceiving it is uh, sort of a feeling and uh, maybe intuitive uh, as you mentioned it but um, th there's also a, a, a sense there for when you are not symmetrical and that is a huge inner guidance because a lot of times we learn to connect with ourselves through what we're not through what disconnects us all right and it's 
easy to say, okay, this outer condition or this person or this event or this circumstance has forced me to become asymmetrical. But there is a component within ourselves, like what we call an energetic habit, uh, that psychology would probably call like an unconscious attachment that makes us respond to our events, to external impulses in a certain way. And when we discover that, what these ways are, then we actually receive guidance on how to balance the spec out, how to go more into our center, how to become more symmetrical. It's very, very cool. Thank you, Janet. Linda is sharing that her perception, her subjective experience here during the session was more physical. She struggled with uh, two new feelings, and this is a, a wonderful opportunity for me to help you guys with uh, interpreting or, or contextualizing some of these energetic sensations, especially the physical ones. So Linda is sharing that she felt like pushed down um, by outer, or like both outer shoulders were being pushed down. Okay, so this is a sensation on the backside of your energy body, Linda. And you describe something here that refers to your shoulders. So the shoulders are linked to our fourth and our fifth chakra, to our heart chakra and our throat chakra. And uh, they are responsible for certain um, energetic uh, processes within ourselves. You can read this here. So it has to do with love, self, love, true self for that matter. And the expression and uh, the expression of truth, the speaking the truth part. And when we feel sensations on the backside of our energy body, then this often also indicates something, namely, and this has a lot to do with the symmetry that Janet mentioned here, namely that we are perhaps leaning forward too much. So if we are constantly thinking, if we are constantly ruminating about the next step, uh, constantly sort of weighing out the pros and cons of things, if we're, you know, uh, sort of pushing forward, you know, maybe pushing ourselves too much in regards of what should I do, then our energy body tends to, to go with this. It goes forward. So there's a different form of asymmetry, namely one where we are a little bit in, in front of ourselves, if you will, again, not fully in our center, and where our backside can become unprotected, where we feel a lot of sort of struggle on the backside, not just of our body, this can also pertain our emotions. Uh, for instance, you know, like that we feel alone or that we feel like other people are talking behind our back or uh, that we are constantly feeling betrayed or, you know, that we are, that nobody has our back, okay? That we are sort of singled out, okay? So that's what this um, particular sensation could hint at for you, Linda. There's also another aspect here that you didn't mention in per se, but if it is very strong in our shoulder blades, maybe someone has had this before. There is a point right between our shoulder blades called the Linden point. Um, it's uh, very significant in energy work because it's, it's considered to be an entry point where outer energies uh, can enter and even take over uh, our energy field, the same with the belly button and uh, some other uh, points. Um, okay, but this particular place between our shoulder blades always hints at the necessity, as Janet just mentioned something like this, to see ourselves more as a multidimensional being and not just in a material way. 
of it. It's basically sort of symbolically seen that we have issues to really feel these wings that we have in the etheric, this, this um, being in us that is much greater than our physical, if that makes any sense. The second sensation that you struggled with, with uh, was the feeling of a sticky frozen ball in what you think might be your third chakra. Um, in, you know, like maybe an emotion aspect that you couldn't break through. Uh, whether or not you assign this to your third chakra would depend on where you felt it, but you can see it's really the, 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 the uh, covers the entire torso below our chest. And um, the third chakra that is responsible for courage and willpower, but also the seat of our ego and control and repressed anger. Um, you know, what we then sort of summarize as the false self and also these identity issues that I already mentioned. Uh, that is, can be felt really in this sternum area. Now, remember, talking about symmetry, you are a 3D being and as a multidimensional being, uh, you know, it's even more than just that. So it's not just where you feel it. It's also sort of the the 3D, the 360 aspect of this. So again here, this can point at the back side of your shoulders, uh, more the shoulder blades, that would be the third chakra. Yes, and uh, Linda is adding to this, now that uh, you know, I'm using words to describe this, that you felt this under your ribs, right above your belly button. And that, Linda, is, almost like a collective attachment that most people have a hard time, if not all, to break through. It's the, the barrier between the third and the fourth chakra. It's this, this barrier between seeing ourselves just as a sort of a 3D person, right? That has a beginning and an end and with all the struggles that come with it, the fear of aging, the fear of dying and so forth. And at the same time, recognizing that there's more to us, uh, something that we often experience uh, when we connect with others, when we fall in love or when we have a deep connection with other people or the deep connection with ourselves, the true self. So this barrier, Linda, is exactly the, the reason why we do these connect with your true self session every month because we need to practice that. It's very difficult for us to break through this barrier. Uh, this is why we recommend people to practice breathing through the heart where we strengthen. And you see this here uh, on the screen. It also shows the symmetry that we can, uh, 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 that we can increase through this kind of breathing where we strengthen our heart center. We strengthen our fourth chakra which then helps to, and this is an energetic turn, out vibrate the density of our third chakra and all its limitations. It's also the limitation of the mind. So the reason why this is a collective attachment is because we are being pulled into our minds through you know, this overall experience of our 3D world. And that is then responsible for us to to get pulled into all these imbalances or asymmetries, as Janet called them earlier. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you for the sharing, Linda. I hope this helped you a little bit to interpret your inner guidance more. So what it really says to you is that, uh, in simple words, you know, that you need to get out of your mind, that you can't really figure it out with your mind, okay, that this is more, a, whatever it is that you are aspiring to is more a matter of actually feeling it out. And perhaps that trying to do this all by yourself within yourself is what creates the barrier, namely this uh, sort of looping within your own stuff. Uh, there's uh, comments or, or phrases that you hear me repeat a lot of times in different trainings and, and 
public sessions where I talk about the ego cannot transcend itself. So this is a very common misconception when we are stuck in this barrier between our third and fourth, between our ego and our heart, our mind and our heart, is that we basically get stuck, sticky, you call this, in this endless loop, okay? And this is where, you know, energy work comes in because it allows us to step outside to change our perspective. Janet described this earlier in her words, and see ourselves not just as this physical being. And when we do this, then we can also realize that some of the perceptions that we have, not just how we perceive ourselves, but also how we perceive the world and how the world treats us, and perhaps the victimhood that we experience through this, or the loneliness, that that confuses us. And that that you know, constantly distracts us, losing our center or all the way to overwhelming ourselves and not really knowing what to do. So that is basically the guidance here that I can pull out of these sensations and in conjunction like uh, uh, with uh, seeing, having read your energy here during the session. So thank you for for opening uh, this up and allowing me to to help you translate this. Any more sharings? Anyone who's had perhaps not so much physical experiences, but perhaps an emotional response here during this session, or even uh, something like a, a strong visual, you know, seeing something, perceiving something through your inner eyes, or perhaps someone who uh, had very strong sort of thoughts coming forward or questions. Did any one of you have um, felt something like, like a question stated to you, something that your attention latched on to, or something that made you sort of focus on one aspect of yourself or that created perhaps a new insight in you. You can keep sharing here. Let me just uh, walk you through uh, our culminated um, observations here. And yes, co-facilitators, please chime in. You know, one thing that, um, this is Amanda here, a co-facilitator. Um, you know, one thing that really came forward um, for me was not, you know, as the question comes up at first as, you know, okay, well, what do I do? What do I do, right? Mm -hmm. And then within the field allows us to kind of surrender this, um, this kind of identity with doing. Um, what came what, what what came forward then was this um, sense of allowing, um, namely that we can accept that there's steps here, you know, this connection mm -hmm. that we're looking for, um, and the inner knowing and the trust and all of these things, um, they come with allowing ourselves to make every step count, right? And not to try to push forward in a way that we can um, feel each step is kind of, <laughs> it's patience. It comes down to being patient with ourselves and the process. It's a process. It's not an event. And um, so this came forward to uh, just allow this, you know, within us to be true and allow the process. Um, so very beautiful. Yes, yeah, so you basically gave a, a, a summary here uh, that I've uh, typed as these these capitalized observations, it, 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 trusting in the process, you know, and seeing that just simply the fact that we came here and that we committed to ourselves, to our true selves, this this one hour, two hour process, it, that this is already a step towards towards ourselves, witnessing ourselves more and uh, gaining more clarity perhaps in what these next steps are, but that there, 
it's not important to have the resolution for the whole big problem. I mean, you know, look at the world right now. We have so many big, big, big problems. There is no one solution. All we can focus on is the next best thing, the next step, and to, to trust in that and to allow that. So that is, uh, uh, Amanda, a, a very, very cool way of describing that. It leads to this reviewing process, you know, like what is the foundation of myself for as whom do I even perceive all of this, you know, and then with this empowerment and the courage that comes through making this commitment to self, we will then begin to see that we can choose our perspective. We can choose the way we perceive ourselves. We can choose whom we want to act as whom we want to experience this as. And that's then something we call witnessing. Witnessing our own transformation. And the inner guidance here in this particular session was very particular about how to center more, how to move more into this inner symmetry, how to create a better foundation. Yes, Janet is chiming in this witnessing of one's own transformation. And there is now extra support with staying centered in what we already know, as well as unlocking from the intellect. Yes, wonderful. This is, this is it, guys. Okay, this is it. It's about you showing up for yourself. And that's what these sessions facilitate for people all in our individual subjective way. And it, this is the first step. You've already made the first step. Okay, so this is very commendable. And in that, something that will support you, that will show you the next step. So trusting in the process is knowing that when you are centered, when you are connected within, that you don't need to see the big solutions. You just need to see the next step. And as you're taking this next step, your energy begins to become more symmetrical, more centered, more cleared, more empowered, more aware of itself, that you have more energy, you have more courage, you have more trust to do the second step, the third step. And the, it's like we're trampolining our way up. And that is the core of this witnessing process that we were able to, to observe here, to participate in today. Now, the problems that came up with this were identity issues, questioning oneself, questioning one's own reality. This is a very common issue, especially in times like right now, where there's a lot of gaslighting, collective gaslighting going on, a lot of, I mean, Janet just mentioned things in regards to the medical view of ourselves, but there's other aspects as well, like economy and politics and so forth. We have an internet that is not integrous. We have fake news. We no longer know what to trust in. And that then uh, has the effect that we begin to trust or uh, begin to question ourselves. This is a big thing here. When we connect with ourselves more, we will realize that uh, we can question about everything Okay, like what we're thinking, what we're emoting, even what we're sensing. Um, but we should never question ourself as a self. On the contrary, the more we get caught up or stuck in this questioning ourselves, the more we need to connect with and the more we need to commit to self, to that greater self in us. Yeah, and as Amanda uh, uh, iterated here, this is a process and not an event. So we don't need to know, you know, in, in regards to like goals or aspirations or ideals or all these expectations that we have, uh, what th this, this ideal might be. We just need to commit. We just need to focus on really being ourselves, being in our center. And exactly what, uh, 
uh, we already filtered out here, there's a missing roadmap that came up for many of you, like not knowing what to trust in, not knowing what the next step is, um, and also missing patience. Okay, some of you uh, were struggling with addiction aspects uh, here, not just in regards to substances, but also in regards to um, perhaps relationship related codependency, for instance, uh, but also addictions, uh, even as we uh, contextualize them here within the sacred self healing community, as uh, ego in and of itself, okay, the, the false self identity that we gain out of um, trying to maintain a certain picture of ourselves or how other people see us. So this externalization that we mentioned earlier is linked to an ego addiction, namely, um, you know, sort of getting this, uh, you know, feedback or uh, validation about self from the outside. It, it needs to be treated just like an addiction. We have to like literally wean ourselves off from that. Um, here again, it can create lots of neediness aspects and also victimhood, you know, where we see the world as responsible to, to or other people, to giving things to us. And a lot of times, especially when you're more on the empathic side of things, you don't really want that. You know, you think it's not spiritual, or it's not um, what a good person does. And so it stays repressed inside of you and then um, produces all these these uh, hidden resentments in us, so we we become mad, at, you know, angry at the world or other people for them not giving things to us that we should actually give to ourselves. It always hints at self-love and self-care. Um, another aspect was the indecision that can come out of this confusion or not knowing what to focus on, you know, sort of constantly looping, going back and forth and never actually doing a step it's very common, guys, just so you know. It's, it's again, here's something that we have to break through. And how do we break through it? Not by trying harder or doing more, but by stopping the whole thing, you know, and going within and allowing ourselves to witness, to experience this connection to our higher self from within. Yeah, being in our heads too much, being too mental, this, again, is, is also part of this collective problem that we have right now that uh, the, the, we are, we're really at the precipice of something really big uh, of, a, of a collective transformation and that is away from this secular left brainy um, uh, materialistic view of ourselves into a more uh, a, a greater or multi-dimensional way of understanding ourselves with which then in the world as well which then allows us to recontextualize a lot of our struggles and find solutions through out of the box thinking, through changing our perception. Strong, a strong impulse uh, to needing to speak truth uh, for most of you. Okay, so uh, we didn't have a lot of physical sensations here as a whole, um, but uh, if anything, uh, the third chakra, like uh, we discussed with Linda was there for uh, most of us as, as kind of dense and tense. And our fifth chakra really, the, the throat, the expression part of us, really wanted to go into uh, more, into expansion. And the beautiful part about the session and why we perceive this willingness for you uh, as allowing and accepting and, and really empowering, okay, it, that came through feeling a strong foundation, feeling more grounded. So there was an energy process that happened spontaneously that grounded us. And as we were doing this, this is a deeper energetic aspect of this session, something else happened, namely our inner third eye, our sixth chakra started to open up more. It was no longer as foggy as it was in the beginning. And it allowed us to see sort of a greater perspective and with it change our perception yeah some of you got uh, stuck in karmic patterns repeatedly getting stuck in transgressions of the past i don't know if you want to raise your hand who of you felt this where you get pulled into the past and all the things that you didn't do and that you should have done and why didn't i and uh, sort of a little bit of a 
of a distraction through you know the 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 the, the regrets that we have or things that keep coming back to us family situations Jonah? yeah i had this really quickly um i've been working with not going in the past but things will flash up but the, what what happened was just really really briefly was was something from the past came up and it's part of this whole process i was actually speaking to my daughter i don't know if that sounds kooky right now but we'll just say that and it was like her fear of what had happened to me. And I just was like, don't worry about it. Trauma can heal. Trauma heals. You can, treal, you can heal your trauma. I've healed my trauma about this incident. Please mm -hmm. don't worry about it. So it was a quick flash to something in the past. And at yeah. that moment, this trauma of this past thing, I was able to, again, like, again, connect it to the, the self-expression and the, all these connections. Yeah be able to express to this other person don't worry about it we can you mm. can do it i can do it and you can move on from this don't worry about it yeah it's one of those things that uh is a uh, very prevalent here uh, for us as energy workers to see in people uh, that we can get stuck in the past and in uh, the trauma and the inner child and these aspects that uh, uh keep pulling us back just as much as we can get pulled into uh, what we talked about earlier, the externalization, the, the um, trying to figure it out, uh, the, the coping um, and, and the, the pushing, trying to push or force through things. These are the main contributors for us to feel fragmented, to feel disconnected, okay? And uh, just so that it, it makes it easier for you to, uh, to understand what I'm talking about here, uh, the the healed energy body, the the state of wholeness within, where we can really feel centered and symmetrical. You can see this here, just sort of visually, is when we allow it all to be there and connect really with all these different dimensions of ourselves. So this is, um, yeah, this is uh, basically uh, what concludes the the reflection here uh, of our connect with the true self session um, i can only encourage you guys to keep coming back you can also do this by yourself there is a five minute mini meditation um, in your instructions uh, where i say the invocation but it's actually more effective if you say it with your own words if you hear your own voice reverberating in your skull so to speak because it's a commitment to yourself share this information share this this uh, free session with other people you don't have to convince them all right just share them discuss these things open yourself up to this kind of of dimension of yourself and you'll be surprised guys you'll be surprised how many people struggle with this and never dare to talk about it with others don't try to convince them of anything remember they are true selves too they have to experience this within themselves all you can show them is perhaps the one thing that can give them clarity that can help them to see the next step namely an opportunity in a safe space where they can connect within all right where they can feel these multi-dimensional aspects the truth, the freedom, the love, and within. Never try to, to in, interfere or infringe upon others what you perceive as your true self, because they have their own, and the only person that has authority about being me is me, okay? So that's why, you know, trying to bring truth to people, make them see truth, is very infringing, and just so you know, from an energetic point of view, is perceived as an attack on ourself and that's what a lot of people experience throughout the day that's why we have these third and fourth chakra these identity issues because everybody tries to tell us who we are or you know either in the spoken or unspoken in the hidden or uh, um, uh, obvious way but accepting yourself as a true self always brings in the recognition of the authority of other true selves as well seeing other people as a true self just like you see yourself can you feel this it opens up a whole new perspective and this also 
amounts for our planet. Every single time you change your perspective, you change your perception and you move into a higher level of inner connection, you are also contributing to this entire collective field, to all the true selves here in this world. You're sending a signal to them. And in that way, you're helping to transform all of us, including the planet. Okay, so uh, in the next weeks of free uh, self-healing uh, training call that is open to the public here on the 24th of September, 3 p.m. Eastern US time, we will discuss exactly that, namely the future of our planet and how the planet has, well, not perhaps, the same kind of true self as we as human beings, but perhaps even a much greater dimension of existence and how our interaction with the planet and what we do and what we don't do in regards to some of these, these burning subjects right now with climate change and so forth, um, how we can shift our perspective and our perception about this that can actually help us to see what the next step might be. Not the big solution, because the planet is much bigger than we are, but the next step as to what we can do to help the planet to heal. And with this, I would love for you to receive my gratitude. Co-facilitators, would you say, do you want to say a last word uh, to anyone, just a comment or a thank you or anything for anyone who showed up here for themselves? It takes a lot of courage to do this and move move through. Well, I don't know, sometimes it feels like a swamp. So kudos to everybody who followed their inner prompting and came because you've sent a huge message back to your own true self of your willingness and your courage and your tenacity to move forward. Even, even if it doesn't feel like a big deal, it's a pretty big deal. So really, thank you all for coming. Much appreciated. Thank you, Cheryl, and thank you.